Hey, hey. Uh, how's it going? How's it going, man? Been a while. Hey, you know, first time uh, caller, long time listener kind of thing. Yeah. I love the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so last saw you in December and things were much uh, more chill in December than they are oh, right now. Oh my God, I'm longing for December. <laughs> Man, like, it just feels like that was just ages ago. You know? It does. It feels yeah. like a different lifetime almost. It really does because it really was a different lifetime right. ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 I uh, I was saying earlier on the on the stream that the last three weeks have felt like some sort of weird dream and like you're just you're gonna wake up at some point and it's not gonna be real because you know you look outside and like sun shining it looks normal my neighbors are walking around but yeah. everybody's keeping like you know you sort yeah. of walk down the sidewalk and you're like oh let me shift over here so that we don't come close to each other I mean <laughs> you know? I think I think that's kind of uh, the danger of of what all this is is that it it doesn't it's an unseen enemy you know and so when people look outside they think oh this is fine you know i can Mm -hmm. be out there and i can be walking around and you know i and and honestly they they need it you know humans are social animals we're not meant to be inside and not interacting with each other so you know the the untold story i keep you know telling around what we're doing is the, the shields and stuff is, is fantastic and it's very necessary. And I've just got uh, piles of just amazing stories around that. But, um, but just the, the distraction and the sense of purpose that it's given people uh, and, and the awareness around how to do it safely. Uh, you know, those are all really important parts of the story as well. Yeah. 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 Tell, tell me, I mean, you've, most people on the stream probably know you've been organizing this huge effort in California yeah, and you're really you're getting stuff from all over the country, right? and and, and uh, the right now the the continent. You know, we got uh, people in Canada sending stuff down here and stuff too. But yeah, just mm-hmm. to, to just a quick you know overview. Uh, about two weeks ago, I started um, what is now called Operation Shields Up, but was just you know me uh, it, you know taking following Joseph Pruce's lead by uh, taking the um, face shield design that he and his amazing engineers you know had put together. Obviously, they're a little bit ahead of us on on the on, on things in Europe. But um, rather than reinvent the wheel, I'm a big you know fan of starting with something that you know they'd had validated in their mm-hmm. uh, Ministry of Health and stuff. And so the the <clears throat> the product or the you know what it is has is evolved since then. Um, I'm I'm hesitant to call it a product because we don't sell them. Um, right. But, but it's you know the, this is you know evolved from the original design and we've you know, gone to injection molding and laser cutting and we're you know it's battlefield medicine right now so we're trying to get these things as fast as we can you know out the door so 3d printing has played a huge part obviously being in a stopgap and it's still involved because we still use it for the chin clip piece and uh and we still take everything that's coming because we need all of it so you know mm. we're we're kind of me- melding it together but just uh if you if for some reason you've been under a rock and kind of under, unaware of what <laughs> what's been going on um probably the best way to kind of get a, a quick uh, up to speed if you uh get on my twitter rep cord and you do a sh- search for op shields up either the hashtag or the at um you'll you'll kind of see like i, I kind of sent out a call to action and one of the other cool things about what we're doing is we're like crowdsourcing the manufacturer of this thing which as far as i know is unprecedented yeah it is totally unprecedented it's and amazing. it's 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 just incredible man Maybe like stuff you know I'm, i apologize my eyes are probably all red and stuff and uh, yeah know, not looking great i'm not <laughs> sleeping a lot no no but but i mean it's it's necessary work and um right so sorry i'm gonna be bouncing all over the place here um the people are basically sending us stuff from all over the the country and that is has allowed us to scale this thing just rapidly you know it's a massive you know many hands make light light work Mm -hmm. in my non-pandemic times i make rep box as you mentioned and stuff and so i already had the wholesale plastic supplier uh contacts i already had the experience with flat packing and a lot of the you know stuff that we're doing with with this to try to get them out in in large numbers um, you know, I see, I see a lot of people jumping on and wanting to help and trying to start up their own things. And we've had a couple people now where, you know, you look at it and you think, Hey, I can 3d print these and then just bring them down to my hospital and give them out. And, and it's not quite as easy as that. This isn't a making mm-hmm. problem. It's a logistical problem. It's a and huge, logistical problem. <laughs> huge. I mean, you, you can yeah. appreciate what it takes to, to, you know, have to go through the logistics of things. And so I, I really love that everybody wants to help. 
Um, but doing that in a meaningful and a safe way is, is really what's important to us. And, um, you know, doing this and, you know, by the thousands and by the 10 thousands and stuff, and then standing up similar op operations, uh, uh, locally, you know, making locally and stuff is what's going to win the day on this thing. So, uh, anyway, the, the big, the big part of what, what we're doing though, is when people are sending us stuff, obviously we have to treat it as if it's infected because we don't mm -hmm. want to be doing more harm by having all these vectors right. and hands and stuff on everything. And so immediately it's cataloged who it is and what they sent us and any contact information that we have. So maybe when this is all, hopefully when this is all done, we can start writing some thank you notes because just people yeah. have been just amazing uh, about this. Um, and sending more than just parts too, like really kind letters, uh, donations, uh, uh, snacks, uh, you know, oh, just cool. all kinds of cool Thanks. stuff, man. Send pooch snacks. Uh, <laughs> well, and <laughs> it's not just me, man. Like this is really going way bigger than me now. There's probably 60 some people between me and my core team and volunteers and, mm -hmm. and really high caliber individuals. Like the more that we produce and the more people see us per performing, the more resources I get thrown at us. And mm -hmm. it's, it's almost overwhelming. Um, because I, you know, I'm going from my experience as a, uh, you know, fresh out of the garage maker into a, you know, co working space where I started this whole thing to like, basically running a, uh, a manufacturing operation in the course of a week, you know, right. <laughs> so it's like, a, it's like a crash course and yeah, in time to scale, up. right? <laughs> scale. And, and I would never, you know, this would cost me, you know, my payroll for some of the people that are, you know, on board, like, you know, CFO and our uh, ops director and, you know, all these right. people that have just found an amazing, you know, space on the bus and kind of followed my lead and stuff, you know, would be in the hundreds of thousands every couple of weeks or something. It's, right. it's nuts, you know, so I could, so the, the, the fact that, we found an interesting time uh, where, you know, there's a lot of people out of work and a lot of people hurting, a lot of people looking for contributing in a meaningful way um, has melded nicely with our need. Uh, and the, you know, the hardest part has been trying to step back from just go, 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 crank these out to let's get organized so we can crank these out even more and in a more effective right. manner. Yeah. So, they try to sharpen the saw, right? The right. Old adage of like, that's you exactly can try, it. You can cut down a tree with a lot of work or you can pause, sharpen your saw and actually cut it down more efficiently and faster, right? Keep going. I'm, I'm going to steal that metaphor because it's, it's absolutely what we're trying to do. And, mm -hmm. and we've been tripping over our own feet and people are trying to help, but then, you know, the messaging, a lot of community, so getting good leadership, organization, mm -hmm. communication, you know, that's what kind of wins the day. Um, one of the things that we, so uh, the problem solving aspect is what, you know, I've really been enjoying around this too, because like I said, not a making problem, logistics problem. Mm -hmm. And I realized early on that, you know, when I did the math on how many printer hours we would need to keep up with our laser cutting capacity, I was going to need hundreds and hundreds of printers going 24 seven with zero failure rate, which as you know, mm -hmm. is not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I was like, okay, uh, well, we have uh, an army of individuals out there that are looking for stuff to do that, that help. And they do. And mm -hmm. I try to take pictures of everything that comes. I mean, it's, it's absolutely, I, I wish, and I want to thank everybody out there that might be watching that. Like, I'm sorry, I can't get pictures of all your awesome notes and, and really cool, you know, the customizations people have done to the, the headsets and the, you know, the doctors are like laughing at, we got some multicolor ones and people are adding their 27 pieces of flair to it, you know? Uh -huh. Which is really, really cute too. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's, ah, oh, dude. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> part part of part of what inspired us to to do this was just the whole verf thing was that seeing the response from people on just how excited people have been to help, you mm -hmm. know. And I think that really goes to just how we are as a species right like we're very social uh people and it's amazing to see i mean i guess i saw this a lot with hurricanes like you would never see your neighbors you know that sort of right. became like i don't know some at some point we got so involved in our phones that we stopped talking to the people next to us no. and uh then but during hurricanes in florida which we get you know all the time you'd go outside after the hurricane and everybody's been inside for so long, afraid that you come outside and it's like, oh, now I can talk to my neighbor. Like everybody's out and about and you see people and you're interacting more. And so now we've got sort of this opposite thing of, okay, now you can't talk to people. And so it's like, I'm standing in my driveway, my neighbor's standing in his driveway and we're like 
you know, shouting at each other to, to have a conversation. Um, but I think one of the positive things that's come out of it is that people are sort of coming out of the woodwork to help. You know? Oh my gosh, so and many. So amazing. Many. Like caterers are throwing food at, you know, the crew, which is, a, which is also necessary. It's like, you know, army lives on its stomach. Uh, right. It, it's really true. Um, and so, but then, and then, so that, that was an interesting problem to have. Uh, Whole Foods like literally brought an entire produce section in, which was Whoa. really appreciated because that's amazing. You know, getting some, some Whole like, Foods. healthy, yeah, healthy stuff um like local caterers like everybody's just been stepping up and and then that's created the need for like our crew care team who's like literally just goes around disinfecting everything in the kitchen and cleaning out the fridge because we're just overwhelmed with stuff and then taking extra down to the you know food bank mm -hmm. uh you know the, it's it's really just this amazing logistical machine now uh and we're you know what i'm really excited about is you know we started with the many hands makes light work and we realized like yeah, I can scale this thing. Like the math on our currently our current facilities, we could be doing well over two thousand units a day, uh, and if I'm fully staffed, probably even more. Um, but we have we we have to be mindful of I can't just throw a bunch of people in the same place, right? We still mm -hmm. have social distancing things. We still have a lot of people that are are concerned. So we we are all in masks and gloves like full time. Mm -hmm. Uh, where we are, we have a whole safety protocol and a safety officer and just like crazy stuff. Um, but we realized too that that to win the day here, logistically, instead of trying to crank everything here, this is a very much a make local effort. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've partnered with uh, Smarter Every Day. You familiar with Destin? Yeah. So they just onlined their operation in Alabama yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. and they've been. Um, I'm, you know, I'm humbled that they reached out to me for, you know, kind of teaching the model to them and uh, did some videos and uh, sent it to me so I could show it to my team. And, you know, they're using the same kind of bins and racking. And so so we were able to online or help online their team much faster by giving them, you know, everything from like the waivers and the you know sign we post right. at the front door and all the all the non-glamorous documentation, stuff. logistical stuff. And they were able to hit the ground running and they already had like. I don't know how many they ended up processing. I hadn't he heard back from Destin yet on this, but you know, I know they had material to do probably three thousand shields within you know next forty eight hours, which is wow, fantastic, that's amazing, right? And so we're trying to find more target rich opportunities like that. I know mm -hmm. that there's um, uh, you know people are are starting to step up and coalesce, which is really awesome. I've had a couple local makers that were trying to do their own thing, and they realized really quickly that it was pretty hard and they couldn't right. get them out and they weren't cleaning them and all that stuff. And so they basically combined what, what they had fundraised into our major pool and, and came mm -hmm. on board. And one of them's like running our print farm now. And, you know, so it's just a, um, an amazing, amazing story just around the, the community aspect. And it's, it's mm -hmm. a much needed, you know, ray of light, I think for a lot of people right now in a really kind of dark time. So, so that's awesome. And then we, we partner with our local church, uh, as well. Actually, it's a, it's a not even local. It's, a, it's all over California. Um, uh, for anybody here, if it's familiar, um, Bay, Bayside is a, is a very large, uh, yeah. church. And so they've Heard offered, of offered use of their facility, uh, which is great because you kind of have to have control over who can come in. Uh, mm -hmm. it was one of their schools that they were using before that they have, you know, has been shut down for the last month. Um, and basically, uh, the way we're, we're working with them is they've agreed to donate so that we can provide materials and consulting, but they'll provide the labor force. And mm -hmm. so we're pilot testing that literally on uh, Tuesday. Uh, and then that'll basically, you know, double our output. Cause again, we're not supply limited, but I can't, right. I don't have the resources necessarily to distribute far and wide yet. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see how this goes. And then they may actually stand up other campuses cause you know, they have this all throughout our state and stuff like that. Uh, and so, you know, this has very rapidly become about modeling a rapid response manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's growing beyond, you know, uh, pro probably growing beyond face shields and stuff too. You know, we're, we're at some point we will saturate the need on that, mm -hmm. um, at least locally. And then we're going to probably switch over to figuring out how we can actually distribute or, or train, you know, in, in locations that need that. Uh, and then, you know, layer in, uh, the, we have like the local sewing groups have been awesome, mm -hmm. like helping us make, you know, these for our people. Yeah. I, I can't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you what a monster. I mean, I literally grabbed a tiger by the tail. I keep saying like, yeah. I sat down at the makerspace two weeks ago and just thought I could make a couple hundred of these um, while, you know, sales were kind of slow and all that stuff. And then it became like, somebody came by, Hey, what are you doing? 
what are you doing? Like, can I help? Mm -hmm. Can I help? Can I help? And it's yeah. just been nonstop. I've got a couple uh, questions on the stream here. I'm going to pull up some, uh, Marcus Adams asked about getting supplies and uh, said, how do goggles compare with full face shield? Yeah. Um, so, so the, the face, how do they compare with full, full face shield? So obviously uh, a big part of the problem is that how, you know, the pervasiveness of COVID being airborne and stuff like that. And so really anything that's keeping it out of your mucosal areas and stuff is, is, is critical. Uh, I think as far as the complexity of manufacturing goggles versus, you know, something like this, you know, that's kind of a different thing. You've got more ergonomics and fitment issues, potentially, mm -hmm. you know, there's right. obviously safety glasses different and stuff like faces that. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Different size faces. And, and by no means do I claim that this, this design is the end all be all, you know, because they're depending on the application and who you're talking to, this is kind of gross, but like some of the feedback we're getting, like some of the ERs and stuff like we, when more splatter intensive, you know, stuff that they're doing, you know, they want to make sure they have more coverage and stuff. And so we yeah, have like a, like a papper, right? The full. Right, right, yeah. right. And we have, so we have a, a different, and that, that's not my design either. That's been a collab with uh, maker Nexus in the Bay area. They have a design where the shield actually comes up and then like cinches together with a zip tie, like a ball cap would over here. Mm -hmm. So you have a little more top protection, but the thing is not everybody needs that. Um, right. Because there's a lot of people that are just like on the front line uh, that, that, um, uh, you know, don't, it's, it's more material and it takes longer and we, we don't want to have multiple SKUs and stuff. And so getting, getting a bunch of makers involved and in not trying to redesign the whole thing and say, no, we have a design mm -hmm. that's working. We need to scale. We don't need a hard fork right now on, yeah. on the design. Like that's, that's the hurting of cats. Anytime you get makers mm -hmm. together, you're going to get a nerd fight about what the yeah. best thing to what's, do is. What's the best way to do it? Yeah. The best thing to do is one, get something, then two, optimize, then three, repeat, you know? And, yeah. And that's, you know, I think that's where we shine. We're like about a week ahead of where a lot of people are logistically mm -hmm. on that piece. Yeah. It's actually interesting. You mentioned a week ahead. That's, that's exactly sort of what I was going to say. They've, there's been a local effort organized here around the Gainesville is essentially it's a college town right so we've got right. the university of florida here there's fifty thousand students here normally right and the university has a ton of resources they have a ton of 3d printers they have laser cutters go gators, go gators. They have laser cutters <laughs> and cncs and and uh manufacturing equipment that is normally used for university purposes and it's scattered yep. in labs across town yep. and there's a bunch of startups like us that have some equipment too and so pretty quickly we had two sort of major groups coalesce one around sewing like the surgical masks right, and then right. the other around producing, uh, you know, hard material parts. And so we've got a, I don't know if the live stream is hooked up right now, but we have a live stream of our office and we've just got a few 3d printers going in there and we've got shifts. People are coming in like, so we know when the, when the prints are done, people come in, they take them off. That's great. And then uh, we've got a driver who goes around to, whatever it is, 10 or 12 different locations in the city, picks up all the stuff, brings it to one place where they've got, uh, you know, everybody's in masks and face shields and taking precautions and they're cleaning things, doing final assembly, and then getting it out to the local hospitals. Right, and right now it's just for like Gainesville, you know, right, right. but I think in the next few weeks, as, uh, things sort of ramp up yeah we'll be we're not even at the peak man That's we're not crazy. even at the peak right yeah no, so it's crazy we'll we'll be able to supply more and i had a couple questions here go for it in the stream about trying to help and i think honestly the best way to help is figure out uh, you know some matt uh, jordan said <laughs> too many cooks in the kitchen right so you don't want yeah. you don't want too many cooks in the kitchen find out whatever uh relief effort is already going on right and just volunteer Start say hey together. Yeah, yeah, group together. Don't don't yeah. go try to start your own thing. Even when we, when I was like, okay, we can do something, and I can go start something. But let me go find, and I mean, we have employees, like we have people that where we could, we have logistical sort of operations, like you were talking about, that we could have started a relief effort. Yep. But the reality is, I'm probably not the best person to do that. So let me wait for and not wait, but like go figure out who is leading that already. Find and, your seat on the bus, find people that right. are leading that effort. I, I completely agree with that. And I keep trying to, you know, encourage that. Uh, you know, I love the movie Saving Private Ryan, one of my favorite. And so there's a quote from that, mm -hmm. that, you know, one guy is a waste of ammo, five guys, a juicy opportunity. Like that's the concept behind this. Like we need to be, you know, banding together. And, right. uh, and, and, you know, even if you don't have, uh, 
it's not just about 3D printing. In fact, it's that's a very small aspect of it. You know, if you have entrepreneurial business skills, logistical skills, supply chain skills, uh, uh, crew care, you know, you know, it, it, if you get enough people together, like you have exponential ability to 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 produce in a meaningful way, and you'll have, you'll build legitimacy. So a lot of this is 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 establishing uh, trust in from the medical community that yep. we're doing this in a responsible way, <laughs> right? right. And so we document right. everything we're doing. We disinfect per CDC standards. We are constantly learning and improving. This is not about ego for us. I'm not trying mm -hmm. to be a facial manufacturer. I am trying right. to respond to a need right now. Right. And my hope is that when that is filled, you know, I can unwind this whole thing. So right. one thing that's worked for us uh, that was awesome, uh, I have a movie producer that's my director of operations. And that's a fantastic analog because she is absolutely used to you, you ramp up you produce, you do your thing, and then you wind it down. And that's what that's what we're trying to do. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other companies that are like looking at it as a profiteering opportunity and all that stuff. And so there's a lot of noise right now. I I, I, I highly encourage the donation model because it resonates with people a lot more and there's a lot less people questioning your motives when it's like, mm -hmm. This is where the money is going. Nobody is getting paid here, which is right. which is a challenge because there's still a cost associated with it. Yeah, right? there is. But yeah. But we're, you know, it, it, there's way too much noise and and issues and and unfortunately just crummy stuff going on on the um, on the on the financial side of it. And so we're trying to detach from that. We're partnered with a 501c3. Everybody gets their tax deductible donations. It's heavily audited. So you know they need invoicing for everything we do. Find those people. I know there's a ton of people trying to stand up GoFundMe's, but there's no real vetting process for that. Mm -hmm. So you know help how you can, but try to be a little bit conscious of what is going to be most helpful. Yeah. Yeah. The, the local group here has also organized a nonprofit organization doing the same thing with a donation model. Good. It's, yeah. The, <clears throat> otherwise you just get into, into sticky issues like you mentioned. And, and I understand because there's a lot of fear right now, right? People are losing right their now. jobs. There's uh, there and there's, you know, it's legitimate. Like that if you lose your job, that's a terrifying place to be. It is, yeah. And all, yeah. and my entire, almost my entire staff is either laid off or furloughed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm lucky that you know I'm able to say like, well, you know what, I can donate at least a month of this, and I'll mm -hmm. have my savings and stuff like that. But uh, right. not everybody is. Um, one of the really beneficial things about doing it the way that we've modeled it is that we're, we're able to. Um, capture larger chunks of funding as a nonprofit from, you know, charitable trusts. And the next call I have after I get off of the phone or the phone, the stream with you, uh, is with uh, our local city council uh, who has grant money for job creation. And so we're going to try, we're trying to talk about how um, we can at least get some like maybe minimum wage uh, jobs for, for people that are helping us uh, to, so to help, obviously employ people and, and and actually create a sustainable model because the truth is this is going to fall out of the news cycle in, in mm -hmm. a week or two and yeah, there's still just being exciting so much so much work to be done and right. so this is literally turned into its own you know I, I don't know i honestly don't know what it's going to do for the future of repcore i have no idea how to put the toothpaste back in the tube at this point all mm -hmm. i know is that you know last night i had a, a, a fire captain from our our local um fire department, Sac, Sac Metro, uh, and he he saw one of our uh, features on the news and he was featured too because they basically have taken all their ambulance resources and turned those into rapid response testing things, but they don't have, that. they're not looked at the same way as the ER docs, so they don't have funding and they don't have resources for this. And he reached out to me and he's like, is there anything that you can do for us? Because I literally, me and my guys are going in to swab people. And I don't know if you knew this, but the swabbing, he explained this to me yesterday. They have to swab so deeply into the back of the throat that that uh, it makes people cough and gag. And the last thing yeah. you want when you're in there swabbing somebody is having them just <clears throat> on you, right? Yep. And so yeah. I gave him, you know, he just came at a right time because we had just cranked out another 500 units, and uh, he just he just wanted, you know, 70 for his his immediate crew, and he was mm -hmm. literally in the verge of like tears, like taking. I know everybody's like on no sleep and all this stuff, mm -hmm. but I mean that's why we make, man. This is why we yeah. do what we do, and I, I try to make sure that that these stories get sh uh, shared with everybody that's helping the the thing because I want everybody to be connected to the giving and and the benefit of this. That's why we put the hashtag on all our stuff so that they can see like I was part of that, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah.
Absolutely. They, I, I know you've inspired a lot of people, Push, in, in the midst of this. Um, part of, at first, I was, when we were starting sort of the ramping up the response activities, I was feeling like, what, what can I do? Like, yeah. I want to do something, but what can I do? And and right. seeing what your operation did and how you guys spooled up so quickly and, and uh, how you really answered the call was, was really very, very inspiring. I know it's inspired a lot of people. So thank Thanks, you for man. doing that. I'm yeah. on the shoulder of giants here, man. This is, this is way bigger than just me. Uh, and, and honestly, if it were not for Joe Prusa starting the whole idea and stuff, I mean, you know, I'm just a small cog in the you know bigger machine. So hopefully we can continue to do some good. Uh, if you want to help, go check out the website. Uh, obviously, donations are always uh, always helpful. If you're local here, we're always looking for yeah. more volunteers. And if you can do this, like if you can band together, or, or, you know, reasonable people, even if it's for uh, sewing masks or anything, like we have a good model. Uh, that we're happy to teach and share. Uh, we're, we're, we're putting a GitHub together. I've got a bunch of stuff on Google Drive. And so we're trying to collect all of that so that that can be a resource for anybody that wants to respond. We do this, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to win the win the war in numbers here. Yep, absolutely. Anyway, yeah. th thanks for letting me uh, get the message out. I know it's not absolutely. exactly 3D printing centric and people are probably tired of hearing of it, but it's important work. Yeah, it is. It's life-saving work. Uh, it absolutely is. I, we've been the it's sort of a sidebar, but the governor's office called us uh, because uh, the governor of Florida, because they were just looking for somebody to right. help right. Uh, this ventilator company here in Florida spool up production. And I, at first, this was like three weeks ago. So at first I was like, okay, is this like for real? Is this some sort of like, it was still sort of sinking in, you know? And then I got on the phone with the CEO of the ventilator company and I was like, okay, can you just like explain to me, exactly what's happening he was like okay here it is in one sentence yeah. if you don't help we don't make more ventilators people are gonna die people die and i was like okay all right i'm on board <laughs> yeah so where, what do i do you know we'll help in whatever way we can so yeah um the need, uh, the need is going to go well beyond just, you know, face shields and stuff like that, too. Obviously, you know, ventilators are more resource intensive and a bigger mm -hmm. you know challenge, but it's all important. Find a way. Honestly, uh, it will help individuals personally. Like if you can find find a way to distract yourself from this by, you know, doing stuff, it's, if it's just 3D printing, that's fantastic. If you can organize your local church or your makerspace or any of that stuff and then find a need, find a seat on the bus and help and you'll find that. If you're at home anyway, you know, we have stuff on there, how to do it safely, you know, what, what mm -hmm. policies, if you're, cause it, we still have, you know, social distancing restrictions and stuff. So be mindful of all that stuff, but there's, a, there's more than enough work for everybody to do here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Alan. Appreciate you jumping on and uh, everybody please follow at RepCord on all the social medias and uh, check out what his team's doing, what he's doing. and. Uh, Please consider uh, donating to the cause. I'm sure Alan can provide more uh, yeah, information it's, for that. It's, uh, it's all on the website, uh, opshieldsup.org. Again, all nonprofit, all that stuff's on there. Uh, and then, you know, I'm trying to respond to tweets and stuff, but I don't have time. So if I don't, I'm, I apologize, but thank you guys for, <laughs> for everything you've done. Uh, happy Verf, everybody. Dan, thank you for organizing this. I know that yeah. it's, a, it's a bit of a bummer that we couldn't all be together for this, but uh, I think I think this is what you're doing is awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on, Alan. Yeah, yeah. See you soon. All right. Take care. All right, brother. Cool. All right. Well, that was awesome. I'm, I've been really excited to, to talk to Pooch since I started seeing his stuff pop up on social media because uh, it really is amazing to see what his team has done. And and I'm excited to keep watching them do their thing and, and get some more inspiration for, 